Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the service. While we gather to celebrate the life of my father, Jacques Sears, I really appreciate all of you who made the time to come to join and to celebrate his life. Today, we're going to have a few things uh, in, in French or in Creole. But mostly, I understand the, the participation most, will be mostly English, and we will do most of the things in English. And our service, for those of you who have your Book of Common Prayer, it's a normal service that will start on page 491, and we will continue to our the book. And the readers today will be my wife, uh, Gilland, uh, for the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And the second reader will be, the psalm will be read for us uh, by Miss Woolworth. And Miss Woolworth, Miss Woolworth will be there to respond to all the, the service. And then, except when it comes to French, even though I know she, she knows French, but uh, <laughs> we are not going to put that burden on her tonight. And after that, the prayer of the people will be led by uh, Regine Fenelon. And then that will be myself, I will preach the sermon tonight. So it is a celebration to celebrate his life. It is a, not a celebration where we gather to cry, but we gather to give God thanks for everything he has done for him, Jacques Sears, my father, for his family, for me through him, and for everybody through him. Thank you again for coming. Let us observe a time of silence as we remember the best things we can remember about him. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes Behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none become his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, 
body waste from the rivers. Yeah. 
Lord be with you and also with you let us pray O God of grace and glory we remember before you this day our brother my father Jack Sears we thank you for giving him to us his friends his family to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Keep us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life. So that with quiet confidence, we may continue our course on earth until by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before us to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lecture du livre d'Isaïe. Ce jour-là, le Seigneur Dieu de l'univers préparera pour tous les peuples sur sa montagne, un festin de viande grasse et de vin capiteux. Un festin de viande succulente et de vin décanté. Il enlèvera le voile de deuil qui enveloppait tous les peuples et le linceur qui couvrait tous les, toutes les nations. Il détruira la mort pour toujours. Le Seigneur essuiera les larmes sur tous les visages et par toute la terre, il effacera l'humiliation de son peuple. C'est lui qui l'a promis. Et ce jour-là, on dira, voici notre Dieu. En lui, nous espérions et il nous a sauvés. C'est lui le Seigneur. En lui, nous espérions. Exultons, réjouis son nom. Car il nous a sauvés. Parole du Seigneur. Gloire au grâce à Dieu. Le 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all, for as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. After he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is the, with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. For this perishable body must put on imperishability and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your glory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Le 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then you will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. 
I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it, to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to you Lord Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. On Saturday, June 13, around 9 p.m., as I was preparing for Sunday sermon, Fredo, my brother in Haiti, called me and told me that my father wanted to talk to me. That Saturday, I can say, it was the beginning of a series of conversations indicating that it is finished. On that Saturday night, my father told me, we will not see each other again. I thank you for everything you have done for me. My answer was, don't even mention it. You deserve more than I've been doing so far. You have done much more for me than I have done for you. He asked me to pray with him. We prayed for a few minutes and then he asked me to bless him. And as I was pronouncing God's blessing on him, I had a flashback and remembered that the last time my father had requested my blessing over him 
was on my ordination day at the cathedral in Port-au-Prince on June 29, 1999. When he approached me, he knelt in front of me and asked me to bless him. That was the first time I know I can minister to my family. I know I can minister to the one, even to the one who gave birth to me. That's the first time I realized I'm being accepted as a priest. Almost 21 years after, he asked me for the last time and for that same blessing, which I peacefully, prayerfully, lovingly, and generously Give to him. After that prayers and the blessing, he instructed me. He told me, if someone needs a glass of water and you have it, give it to him. If someone is hungry and you have food, make sure you feed that person. If someone is sick and unable to see a doctor or to buy medication, if you have money, give it. My father did not ask me to do anything that he himself, he was not doing. He did not ask me to do anything that the gospel had not already required me to do. He did not ask me to do anything that I was not preaching or expecting others to do. My last conversation with my father had inspired me to choose the 25th chapter of Matthew's gospel today as we gather to celebrate his life. This passage of Matthew that we just heard reminds us of the judgment day. There will be a judgment day and for everyone for everybody, whoever you are, there will be a judgment day. The judgment day will be about, I was hungry and you gave me, or you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me something or you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me or you did not welcome me at all. I was naked and you gave me clothing or you did not clothe me. I was sick and you took care of me or you failed to take care of me. I was in prison and you visited me, or you did not visit me. The judgment day, my brothers and sisters, will be about how much we love God and how much we love our neighbors. St. John of the Cross said, Au soir de la vie, Nous serons jugés sur l'amour. The judgment day will be about love. Love for God, 
in love for our brothers and sisters. In Luke, in the 10 chapters of Luke, verse 25, an expert in religious law asked Jesus, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of God, to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus told him, do this, and you will live. So what Jesus was suggesting is that when you love, you live. And you will live not only today, you will live forever. And you will inherit eternal life, eternal life based on love. If you love God, if you love, if we love one another, if we treat each other well, if we treat each other with justice, if we give peace, bring peace to each other, if we treat each other lovingly, this is the beginning of eternal life. As we said, my father was right on the money. I believe he has been preparing for his judgment day by practicing love. I am sure he has a chance to make peace with the Lord, his God, his Savior. I am sure he had a chance to make peace with his brothers and sisters. I have seen my father taking the time to pray every day, and not only once a day, more than once a day. I believe he has developed a strong and loving relationship with his Lord and his Savior, as evidenced by his regular, regular prayer time. I believe he has lived up to the expectations of the Gospel of Matthew. Whatever he had, he shared with people. My father's house, doors are literally always open. He welcomes everyone. He shares his food with everyone. He was a loving person. And when you have him next to you, you feel joy, you feel talking, is a person of conversation. My father has a monthly allowance, but he is complaining always that it was not enough. I could not understand how come it was not enough. But I found out my father shared that allowance with everyone in need. About four years ago, he came to visit us. And while he was about to go back to Haiti, he presented us with a big project. He wanted to bring gifts to 42 needy people residing in a poor house in Haiti. I asked, why 42? And he said he had counted them before he leave Haiti. And he knew that if none of them died, they were 42. And he wanted to bring something for them. And he told me that was the number 42. I was a little suspicious of where that money 
was truly going. Later on, when I checked with my brother in Haiti, he confirmed for me that my father did give them to the needy people because he said he saw with his own eyes people, he went to bring them to, the, to bring all the things, the gifts to them. And some of them who were not there followed him to his home so that they asked for the gift, their own gift. And some obviously did not even try. But my brother testified that it was it. That was true. This is what he wanted to do. He wanted to make sure those who do not have, he can share what he had with them. And that was his way to show his love. I feel, I feel so encouraged and happy when so many people keep telling me how my father had helped them and how grateful they are. So many people have been ready to help me because of my father. So many times I met people in the street I don't even know. When I tell them who is my father, they are ready to help me. And they are telling me stories, good things that my father has done. And that encouraged me. And all of those stories are loving stories, are stories during which he was sharing what he had with them. In 2005, when I finally made my mind to leave the Roman Catholic Church to become an Episcopal Anglican priest, I shared that decision with my father. And he said, I don't know that church well. I don't know Anglican Episcopalians. I heard about them, but I don't know them. What do they preach there? Do they teach love? I said, of course. They teach and preach love. He said, I have no objection. If they teach and preach love, I have no objection. Go for it. Here I am. I had his blessing to join the Episcopal Church. Last July, after his birthday party at St. Thomas Church, he said to me, he was so happy the way everybody was there welcoming him. And he said to me, your people are kind and loving people. I told him, do you remember your question to me a few years ago when you asked me whether they preach love there? Now you see for yourself, not only do they teach love, but they also show love. That was a great thing to St. Thomas. I'm so proud of you. I have to say, my father and I were not always in good terms. From time to time, we had some serious disagreements. We were not always on the same page. One year, while he was here on a visit, we had a big disagreement. He left the U.S. upset to go back to Haiti. He never called me. On his birthday, that was July 24th, I called him to wish him happy birthday. He was still upset. He picked up the phone, pretending that he did not know who was calling. He asked, who is this? I said in Creole, c'est moi Lulu. It's him, qui Lulu ça? 
c'est Sully Guillaume Sam. Il dit, c'est où que est là? Monsieur dit, c'est où, où tu sais où que est là? Monsieur dit, c'est moi, papa, qui est là. Il dit, non, c'est pas où. Il dit, bon, monsieur, c'est moi, dit, c'est pas où. Il dit, non, je ne peux pas croire que tu m'appelles. Ce n'est pas toi. Je dis, c'est moi. Et je te dis, c'est moi. Comment tu peux dire que ce n'est pas moi? And he said, I would not believe that you would have called me because you are not my friend. We are not friends. And he started venting again, going back again to everything that had happened. And I said, you know, I called you to wish you happy birthday. I did not call you to argue. Bye and happy birthday. We hang up and leave. A week after, I call back and ask, I ask, I ask him, are you still upset? Are you still too upset to receive your birthday gift from me? He said, why do you ask? Just send the money. I sent the money, he was happy, and he began to forgive and forget everything that happened. And that was our reconciliation again. From that time on, we never had such a big argument, such, such a big disagreement until his last day on earth. That was the type of person my father was. He was a man with whom you could joke. He had all age group for friends. He related well to all age brackets. When my father tells you something, don't take everything literally as my wife would do at the beginning. She used to believe everything my dad said. And until I said, no, you, sh you should take part of it and leave part of it because this is not, and my wife said, uh, kind of, I'm confused because the way he's talking, I think it's, it's true, everything is real. And I said, no, 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 I will tell you what is real, what is not, until you, 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 you learn for yourself and to know, to separate them. This was the type of person he was. He always had some spicy ingredients to whatever he has to, to say and to make you laugh. Sometimes it's very difficult to separate what is true from what is joking, from what is a joke, from what he has added. It's very difficult, but it was his way to share life. It was his way to bring joy. It was his way to share laughter, to bring life among us. I will miss him a lot. I will miss him in my life. I will need to start living with only the great memories and legacies of love he has left for me. I am happy because before he leaves this world, I have shown him all the love I could, all the respect I could, all the gratitude I could. Jackie, you are free to live now. Your job is well done. You will meet with your God who is love. You will fully understand and appreciate and experience what love is all about. 
Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Washington. Thank you, all Timajus. Thank you, all kind of names that people know to call him. I really sincerely thank you for everything. Thank you for things that I know, for things that I don't know, for things that I remember, and even for things that I don't remember. I wish to see you again in heaven. Love you. Amen. Amen. Let us now proclaim our faith in God, in the assurance of eternal life, giving at baptism. Let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Seigneur, écoute-nous. Pour notre frère Jacius, Prions le Seigneur Jésus-Christ qui a dit, « Je suis la résurrection et la vie. » Seigneur, écoutez-nous. Écoute Seigneur, toi qui as consolé Marthe et Marie dans leur détresse, rends-toi proche de ceux qui pleurent ton ami Jacques et essuie toute l'âme de nos yeux. Seigneur, Seigneur écoutez-nous. Écoute toi qui as pleuré ton ami Lazare au tombeau, réconforte-nous dans notre peine. Seigneur, écoute-nous. Toi qui as fait revivre les morts, accorde la vie éternelle à notre frère, à notre frère Jacques Seus. Seigneur, écoute-nous. Toi qui as promis le paradis aux brigands repentis, Conduis notre frère Jacques à la joie de ton ciel. Seigneur, écoute-nous. Tu as lavé notre frère Jacques dans l'eau du baptême et tu l'as marqué de l'Esprit Saint. Reçois-le dans la compagnie de tes saints. Seigneur, écoute-nous. Tu l'as nourri de ton corps et de ton sang. Accorde-lui une place à la table de ton royaume. Seigneur, écoute-nous. Sois notre réconfort à la mort de notre frère Jacques Sirius. 
que la foi soit notre consolation et la vie éternelle notre espérance. Seigneur, écoute-nous. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Jacques, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. This is the time for the commendation. And after the commendation and the prayer, I will leave the floor open for those of you who are here who would like to, to share a few words. And that will be the time for you to, to share them. Give rest of Christ to your servants with your saint. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, form of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Jaxius with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Jaxis. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, 
a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. At this time, whoever wants to address a few words, this is the time to, to do it. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Alexis Noel. Father Tuli, on behalf of the vestry, the warden vestry, and the Episcopal Church Woman of St. Thomas, please accept our deepest condolences to you and your family and the passing of your dad. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Good night, Father Tully. This is Cora Hayward. On behalf of myself and my family, I give you our deepest sympathy. And may your father rest in peace and rise in glory. And I will not forget the hug and the kiss he gave me the night his birthday. May he rest in peace. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Father Sully and the, the entire family and everybody who's listening or everyone who's viewing. My name is uh, Father Lamartine Eliska. I'm a Catholic priest, uh, a good friend of the family of Sully. So uh, I'd like to extend my sincere condolences to Sully and his family, especially those who are in, in Haiti. So uh, it is... Uh, a uh, very unfortunate uh, situation, but uh, as Christians and as people of God, we believe that uh, uh, Father Sully's father is in the hands of God where uh, he belongs. And uh, it was very fascinating to uh, hear Fa uh, Father Sully talk about his father. And uh, I cannot uh, count how many times the word love came up doing his homily. And uh, I think that uh, even though I didn't know him, and probably most of you didn't know him either, but uh, the testimony of his life is an example for us who are, be who are left behind. And, uh, you know, uh, by listening to Father Sully's homily, you know, I come to know his father, the type of person he was, and the, the way that... Uh, uh, everybody who knew him, even myself, in listening to, to the homily, will remember him. But uh, for the rest of us who are here, uh, the question is that, how do we want people to remember us? So uh, I think uh, the gathering tonight uh, will give us an opportunity to talk about, to think about our own lives as uh, people of God, the way we live our lives. So once again, uh, my condolences to the to Father Sully and his family, and may his father rest in peace. Thank you, Father Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Father Sully. On behalf of myself and my family, you have my condolence again. And I know from the day I met you that you were coming from a good route. And I know your father is resting in Jesus' arms. So God bless you and your family. Keep faith, keep the strength, because I know you're coming from a strong family. Thank Good night, you. Father Sully. This is Marilyn Richards. You have my sympathy. And I pray that God will take care of you all the days of your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Richards.
good night, Father Sole. This is Robert Fairman. Um, condolences to you and your entire family. I want to say, I know your father, and I'll tell you why. Because I know you, and how you speak of your father is how I have come to know you. Um, and your father may rest in peace, rise in glory, but he lives on in you and the man that you are and the person that you are. Be strong, brother, friend, and pastor. Good evening, my cousin, Father Suli. This is Reverend Andrew, just extending my condolences. And I'm reminded in the word of God, where the scripture says, rejoice for the steps of a righteous man are ordered. And truly, we can say that your father's steps were ordered. He has left an indelible mark on your family and those who have known him over the years. I was blessed to meet him for the first time, actually, at his birthday last year. And it was a blessing to be able to pray over him and pray with him during that celebration. And I just want to encourage you during this time and be reminded that God is with you and that his peace will cover you and that there is no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Be encouraged, my cousin. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dans nos associations uh, épiscopales haïtiennes qui vivent l'autre bord de l'eau, je um, voulais dire aux condoléances. Uh, nous n'avons pas avec la famille, moi tout. Uh, nous connaissons que ce n'est pas un moment qui est facile, mais nous demandons pour qu'il y avec courage, avec détermination, parce que pour nous-mêmes chrétiens, la mort n'est pas vraiment une séparation qui est terminale mais c'est en séparation jusqu'en attendant que nous tous nous rejoignons encore dans deux plats, mais papa bon Dieu. Que bon Dieu qui est que bon Dieu bénit avec toute famille et uh, dans nos associations et dans nos pas moins sincères condoléances. Merci. Father Sully, this is Mildred Preville. Reverend uh, Mildred and Philomé is next to me. I am so moved by the lifelong story of your dad, such a special man, such a great man. What a son and father's relationship you shared with him, along with his extended, I know, Asian family. Now you have to live to his last words, all the things that he asked you to do while he was alive and while he had the opportunity to tell you before is before he expired. Please accept our deepest, deepest sympathy. You are in, you remain and you are in our prayers. Thank you. Father Sili, c'est Père Simpson Coriola. Je suis là. Je suis à travers au milieu là. Combien ça n'a pas de représenter pour vous et comment mon papa ou petit être le moment venu pour lui exprimer gratitude avec papa. Et dans ce sens, dans ce grand maître là, à diriger, à préconforter ou même à toute famille dans un moment si pénible ça, que papa reposer en paix. Merci. Merci. If one day, when I'm old and gray, I hope to have grandchildren of my own. And if they ever ask me, Grandpa, what was your grandpa like? I'll say, my grandpa was the kindest man that I ever knew. Three distinct memories come to mind. The first being uh, his 90th birthday party last year. Um, I remember him walking in on my mom's arm and <laughs> this guy was so incredibly in his element, it was insane. Everyone was cheering for him, screaming his name and he was just waving and smiling. And I remember thinking, I wish I could be more like that. Someone who just 
you know, fills the room as he walks in and is comfortable doing it. I could have brought this guy to a friend's little sister's sweet 16, and he would have insisted on grabbing the mic and giving a speech, <laughs> even though he wouldn't have known the, 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 the birthday person. That's the kind of person that he was. Um, all ears had to be on him, but it was okay because when he spoke, you knew that he knew what he was talking about. You couldn't help but just sit and listen with, with reverence. The second me memory that, that will come to mind um, will be also last year. Um, my grandmother had given me this really cool fedora um, and I came home one day and my grandfather was wearing it. And, I, and he goes, oh my gosh, so where'd you get this? And I go, oh, it was a gift. I didn't tell him that my grandma gave it to me. And he goes, I love this so much. Can I please have it? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like leaving for Haiti like that day. And I was like, I, I really, in my head, I thought, I really love this hat. My grandma gave it to me. I was, I was gonna say, no, you can't, sorry. Mama, my grandmother gave it to me, so I can't, I can't give it to you. But he gave me, but before I said that, he was giving me these intense, beautiful puppy dog eyes and just smiling and this hat made him so happy. You would have thought it, it was like a million dollars or something. So I said, yes, yes, you can, you can have the hat. And he just jumped up and down. He was so, so happy to have this hat. So and I was like, ah, I, I, I did the right thing. Although I, 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 I do miss that hat. But I'm glad that he had it this last year. And uh, the third memory that comes to mind and makes me think that he was the sweetest man that I ever knew was I think it was like six, five years ago. Uh, we were all just in this room and something had happened and he was sitting on that couch and he was just in tears, just so moved by what was going on. And it was just really great for a teenager for me to see my grandfather just so, to, to openly weep like that. It, you know, it's, it's really important for I think boys to see men do that. So those three memories I will carry with me forever. And I look forward to telling my grandkids those stories one day. Thank you. Thank you. Father Sully, this is Rosalie. I just want to give you my heartfelt condolences on the loss of your dad. But hearing you speak about him tonight, um, it feels like he's not gone. He's not physically with us, but he is with us still. And last year when you said you were going to have a party for his birthday and then you said you didn't know if he was going to have the party because he was sick and you didn't think he was going to have the party, but the party went off anyway. And the night of the party, I couldn't believe that this was the man who was so sick. He danced and had a ball at his party. If anyone said that he didn't enjoy his party, then they were not at the party to see him because he totally enjoyed himself. So now he's not physically with you and your family anymore, but he will stay with you all in, and all the memories that you have of him, you will keep them and you will continue to share them with everyone. And I see where you get your humor from. It's from your dad. May your dad's soul rest in peace and may he rise in glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Father Sully, this is Pearl Reiner. On behalf of my family and I, I would like to wish you my heartfelt condolence on the loss of your father. I understand what it's like to not have a father, but it's great that you have great memories and that helps us to go through the times when we don't have them physically with us. Thank God he was a spiritual man and he made you happy since you're also a spiritual man. May his soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. 
I understand no more talking. So this is the time for me to say thank you and to express my gratitude to you all. Either my family who are here surrounding me, supporting me. And I thank you very much my church family as well. So you come out to support. I know how difficult it is the time and the place, how difficult it is for you, but you show up anyway. I thank you very much. And also I want to thank my brother, Haitian priest, Episcopalian, who showed up surprisingly enough. I did not even know you were there. And actually you get all the information very late, maybe this morning, and you all showed up. So I apologize for not having a communicated it to you earlier. So, but I'm so pleased, I'm so proud of you. You come to support me, to support my family. I thank you very much. I thank you Father Lamar, I, all the way from Boston. So you showed up and my cousin, you there. So thank you very much and I know I thank you for your support. I know how much you have been supporting uh, since you heard my uh, uh, the passing of my father. You, you stepped for me this past Sunday and you will step again for me this Sunday. So that will be greatly appreciated. So I thank you all very much. So I will, uh, if no one is saying anything, I will continue, uh, I will, play the last hymn as a Magnificat, which is a wonderful hymn to say thank you to the Lord. And that was the word of Mary in the Magnificat song. And then it is a very nice hair, Haitian hair. So let's listen and pray with it. I say thank you. Thank you. 
Let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us before we depart from here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Thank you again, everyone, and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, man, it's so damn. <laughs> 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 Take a big eye, you see your desire for it. Take a big eye.